Hello, my name is Brad Langdell, and I want to talk to you some more about the applications due to gravity. Hey, this is part two, because all great movies deserve a sequel. Let's take a look at some problems. Derek Jeter throws a ball vertically into the air. Initial velocity of 18.9 meters per second. Hey, there's your initial velocity for this problem. It's caught at the same distance above the ground at which it was thrown, which means he didn't, like, drop it and didn't land on the ground here. Jeter doesn't do that. He catches it every time. Now, how high did the ball go? How long was it in the air? Part A. Think about the variables. We have an initial velocity of 18.9 meters per second. We want to know from starting up here, where he throws the ball and goes up to the top of this height. Okay, here's Jeter's like hand here, something like that, where he releases it off the ground. What's this displacement? Okay, so we're looking for displacement. Don't know that. But we do know that when you reach that maximum height, the ball's got to stop. That's the cool things that go up. A uh, cool thing about things that go up. Eventually, they stop. That means its final velocity in the motion that we're concerned with is zero meters per second. So that means my final velocity is zero. And of course, as always, we know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, what do we got for formulas here? Well, we could use uh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. We can substitute in. We know that the final velocity is zero, 18.9 meters per second. I'm going to square that, plus 2, times negative 9.81 meters per second squared, times the d I'm looking for. All right, so we're going to run through the old calculator, see what we get here. I'm going to go and take my 18.9, and I'm going to square it. All right, now I'm going to move that term to the other side. All right, I'm going to move that to the other side by subtracting whatever that number was, 387.21 from both sides and move it to the other side. So it's going to be a negative, all right? There it is on my calculator. I got a negative value. Then I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to divide it by negative 9.81. This thing is going to go 18.2 meters up into the air. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, now how long is it in the air for? Okay, now we're asking for time. So uh, we've got time to throw into the mix. We can use a lot of the information from the last question, though. But the problem is, when we want to know how long a ball is in the air for, we're not only concerned with its initial velocity when it's thrown up at 18.2 meters, or 18.9 meters per second, we also want to know how long does it take to come back down. Now, here's the cool thing about motion, kids, and gravity. When you go up at 18.9 meters per second, that ball will come down at negative 18.9 meters per second. They are the same, but one's negative if it's coming down. So that means we can use that to help solve this problem to solve for time. In fact, we can do it really easily just using the accelerated motion formula, definition of acceleration. Final vi minus initial velocity divided by time. So I have acceleration, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I got myself a final velocity. Now be careful here. Negative 18.9 meters per second is the speed it comes down with. We got to get that negative in there. Minus positive 18.9 meters per second. I'm being careful to put my integers in. I'll divide by time. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to substitute everything in. I'm going to go and s divide negative 9.81. No, I'm going to do my subtraction first. Negative 18.9 minus 18.9. And now I'm going to go through and divide by negative 9.81. So that ball is in the air for a total of 3.85 seconds. And you know what? If you wanted another approach of doing that, you could definitely figure out how long it takes to go from an initial velocity of 18.9 to a final of 0. And that's going to be half the time that I gave you down here. Or you could say, how long does it take to go from initial to final of negative 18.9? Same formula, but by giving it different final velocities, it spits out different time. So try that one out. And there's more problems like this on the website, www.ldindustries.ca.